When you look back to the original justices, I mean, we, we literally have signers of the Declaration. We have founding fathers. We have individuals who wrote America's first legal commentaries that were judges. And you find that in their courtroom, they were not hostile to Christianity or religion. You actually find folks like Thomas McKean, when someone was sentenced to death in his courtroom, he'd give an altar call. Oh. And we think, that's not appropriate for courts. Well, who told us that over the last 30 years? Uh, this is a, a book from another very, very famous early judge. His name was Jacob Rush, Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Interesting little section he has in here on this book. Uh, it's a address he gave on the sentence of death. This was in November of 1797. An individual had been sentenced to die. He said, you've had a fair and impartial trial. The witnesses have been examined in your presence. You selected your own jury. You've been ably and zealously defended by your own counsel. So he's had all the due process and the courts, the, the jury still found him guilty. So he's been sentenced to death for this murder. This is what the judge says. He says, as you have but a short time to live in this world and there's no hope of pardon from any earthly hand, let me urge you to seek a pardon from above. And he goes on through to tell him how to find that pardon from above, how to pray and what to pray and what God can do for him if he'll ask forgiveness. So there was not a hostility a at all. As a matter of fact, you'll find that the folks like Charles Finney, who is a great revivalist in the Second Great Awakening. Charles Finney, born in 1792. Charles Finney made it real clear in his autobiography, he didn't want to be a minister. He wanted to be an attorney. So he entered the study of law. And in the study of law at that time, early America, he said that as he read his law books, when it gave the law, it also gave the Bible verse on which the law was based. He said in the process of reading his law books that he read so much of the Bible that he became a Christian by studying his law books. Now, that's not going to happen today. I mean, we're real hostile toward religious expressions. But you go into the original Supreme Court, they had prayer in the Supreme Court. They would not let a jury go out to deliberate until they brought a minister in to pray over the jury. The jury needs to get the mind of God on this verdict. We had prayer in the courtroom. We also had church services in the courtroom. The Supreme Court met inside the U.S. Capitol. It was regularly used as, as a church room every Sunday. The Supreme Court meets Monday through Saturday, and on Sunday it became a church room. <laughs> we just did not, as a matter of fact, they had massive communion services in, in that room. Really, there was a communion service that lasted over four hours in that room. Now, I've been to some long church services in my life. I've never been to a four-hour communion service, wow. but you have that happening inside the court. So you, you have a lot of pro-religious faith. They're not hostile at all. That certainly has changed, but that was never the way it was designed. I mean, these guys were not there to make policy. Now, the court today has become the policy-making branch, but that was never the design of the Founding Fathers. Yeah.